lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Hold the top, baby. Get the diamond going. There you go. <laughs> Amen. Did you have? Did you? No, we already talked, man. We talked mentally. We have ESPN. There you go. Well, we're. we're and doing Twitter stuff. I know this for a fact because it's right, I can see it vividly, it's right here to my 10 o'clock. And I'm just thinking to myself. <laughs> That's it. There is no happy look for that. You can't put your phone down. You know what, if you're zoning out, at least pick your head up and give him at least some sort of respect that he put some time into it. I understand the clowns you've heard and been around, but real, just fake it, man. <laughs> or pray and say, Lord, would you change my heart because I really don't want to be here right now, and would you change my heart so I'd like to be here right now because I know you'd probably have something for me if I would just be a, avail myself of it. But yeah, the phone thing, and oh, phew, man. I, I'm just saying, person, I don't need any more distractions. I don't. I do not need any help with my mind going all over the place. All right, so first question tonight, after all that fun blurb relation. Who rescued Jeremiah out of the prison pit? Give me a name, and if you're really cool, give me what he... There, I mean, there's more to it. We'll, 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 just give me his name for now, and we'll, we'll read it. Brother Bert raised his hand, but does anybody else have a shot at this? It's actually pretty cool. It's actually really cool when you see it. Brother Bert, go ahead. Go ahead and, go ahead and mess it up. Go ahead. I'm, I'm done. He's, his name is Ebed Melech. It's, go, to, go over Jeremiah 38. It, now, let me, let me ask you a question. All kidding aside, Kenny, did you have it? I just had the chapter. Okay, Jeremiah 38. Now, who gets redeemed, who gets saved in Acts chapter 8 because of Philip? An Ethiopian what? Do not tell me that's a coincidence. Don't tell me the centurion that loved our nation and built us a synagogue and was at the cross and said, truly, that was the Son of God. You can't persuade me that's not Cornelius. So look what the Bible says. Uh, Brother Burke, can you get 7, please, through 13? Jeremiah 38, 7 through 13. You say, how do you know this stuff? Hey, it's just like you know the characters in a book that you read or a TV show. Go ahead. Ebed Melech, the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs which was in the king's mm house, -hmm. heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon. The king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin, Ebed Melech, Melech, went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, My lord the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon, and he is like to die for hunger in the place mm -hmm. where he is. For there is no more bread in the city. Then the king commanded uh, Ebed, Ebed oh, he's going to put it in there a ton of times to mess you up. Go ahead. <laughs> the Ethiopian saying, Take from hence 30 men with thee, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he died. Mm -hmm. So Ebed Melech took the men with him and went into the house of the king under the treasury, and took thence old cast clouts and old rotten rags, and let them down by cords into the dungeon to Jeremiah. And Ebed Melech the Ethiopian said unto Jeremiah, Put now these old cast clouts and rotten rags under thine armholes under the cords. And Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with cords and took him up out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained at the court of the prison. That is so cool. Where did he get those cast clouts from and those rags? The treasury. Mm -hmm. He didn't pick all the fancy stuff. He picked the stuff that was useful and could be used of God. What did Jesus Christ do when he washed those disciples' feet? Just took a towel, 
just an ordinary, ordinary dish rag. Of, that's what God's just looking for. He's not looking for the big, fancy, shining gems in our lives, man, or the people that shine in the ministry. He's looking for people who just want to be there to be used of God, man. Could you just be an old cast clout? Could you just be a dirty old rotten rag for him? And look what it did. Pulled up an old prophet out of the dungeon, out of the pit. And the Bios is in a mire. He's probably down in a really nasty spot in that dungeon. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. All right. What is the substance or the main point of the Noahic covenant? In other words, the agreement, the covenant God made with Noah. Number one, what is it? And number two, where is it? But those will those obviously combine together to give your answer. What is the covenant that God made with Noah after the flood? He does give him some instruction that is correct, but he actually uses the term covenant with a specific promise given to that man and then following that man for generations afterwards. Is you guys, Justin, want to give it a shot? Uh, Genesis 9. Uh, the covenant is that he's not going to flood the water with the, or, or the earth with waters anymore with the flood. 8 through 17, please, of Noah, of Genesis, of Noah 9. Yeah, Genesis chapter number 9. 9 is the number of what in your Bible? No, no, it's perfect fruitfulness. How many fruit of the Spirit? And then ninth book of your Bible is 1 Samuel, where David comes out. And all that good stuff as the, as the Davidic seed for, on the throne. But look at what verse number one says. And God blessed Noah and his sons and sent them be fruitful and multiply their there. <laughs> Go ahead. Read verses 8 through 17 if you could. This is God. the Noahic covenant. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. Mm -hmm. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a, a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. Mm -hmm. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, mm -hmm. and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I will remember the everlasting covenant between God mm -hmm. and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. That's pretty cool right there, huh? I like that. The bow in the clouds, man. Every time you see a rainbow, it shouldn't remind you of the perverts and the sodomites and the homos and the weirdos out there. They're stealing God's promise to this earth and to a man called Noah that I'll never destroy this earth again by a flood. It's interesting he says a flood anymore. What's the commission he gave to Noah? Be, be what? And, and do what? What did he say to Adam and his wife? What do you think happened in Genesis 1, 1, 1, 2? A flood. Oh, I don't believe in that gap theory. You're stupid. I'll excuse it for now. Until yeah. I show you the 20 verses on it that prove otherwise. Of course there's a flood. Don't call it a gap. It's a flood. It's a flood. I won't use a flood anymore to destroy this earth. <laughs> yeah, man. There's sure, there sure is something to happen between Genesis 1, 1, and 1, 2. And I don't care what Kent, uh, Kent Hovine says or Ken Hammer and them other dudes. And they're, they're good dudes when it comes to preaching the gospel. And they're good for arguing with the dinosaur people and all that stuff. But honestly, don't corrupt the Bible because you don't like it. And then go to Exodus 20 and say, well, in six days. Yeah, the six days after the first verses of 1 and 2 of Genesis. You know what sold that thing for me? It wasn't a commentary. It was that right there after reading it through and reading it through is that God gave the same commission to a man after a flood that he gave to a man who started everything out. And gee, I wonder what, that's after a flood. 
Bible with Bible clears up all this foolishness, man. All right, go to Revelation, show you something real neat, and then we'll, then we'll move on. Uh, Haley, get Revelation 4, 1, 2, and 3, if you could. And I, I know we're probably going to be here a little bit later, but that's all right. It's good for you. That is so cool, man. <laughs> the bow. It's all I mean, just run it run it in your in your Bible, man. It's up in glory around the throne, man. Don't you have to travel to an emerald city on a singular yellow brick road to go see a man who knows everything? Follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> Follow the Where do you think they steal that from? That's not original. L. Frank Baum didn't come up with that out of just a whim. He's taking that from the King James Bible, man. <laughs> Tolkien gets his stuff based upon the Word of God. I mean, come on, man. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new that's going to come up that oh, God's going to go, we forgot that. I cannot believe we didn't put that in the Bible. <laughs> Weird, man. Jonathan, you have your paw raised? Mm-hmm. Actually, in your good friend, your your former father-in-law, he uh, he said he has he said that no no that that's true no no, no you're done kid you're out but yeah there's he that it's supposedly the bow if you could somehow see it it continues like in a yeah man that's my point and there how many colors are there to, are there to a rainbow. Not the perv weird one with the light blue and the, you know, we touch children and all that stuff. That should bother you, by the way. They shouldn't be, oh, we're accepting of them. No, they need to get saved. The, they, what's that? It's Roy G. Biv. Very good. Roy G. Biv. Not many people know that, man. Seven? Oh, she just killed one. Yeah, seven. Red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, and violet. Blue, green. I meant Roy G. Biv. You guys didn't know that, man? That's a mnemonic device right there. Okay. Paul, we've got a lot of stuff to go over, man. We didn't cover that in Tuesday nights. Roy G. Bibb, that I, I'm shocked. You learned that from school. I'm shocked that they actually taught. That's like, a, that's like an old thing, man. Stafford? Bingo. There it is, man. Well, he's just saying, he's like, he's like, <laughs> he's like, that's all I got, man. That's all you got, man. <laughs> that's good. Roy G. Biff, that's big. You just moved up several notches. It's big, man. Roy G. Biff. I'm waiting. Come up hither. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Amen. All right. Last one. We got to move, man. Time's going quick. I need some verses on new things in the King James Bible. New things, but somebody preached to you the things that are above the sun, but you were probably out that day. I was. You're going to be out if you keep it up, boy. There we go. <laughs> new things, man. You know, new creature. You know, they make all things. All right, Taylor and then Jennifer. She hates that. Go ahead. Oh, there you go. I saw. That's pretty cool. A new heaven, a new earth. What's wrong with the one we have? Sin. Yeah. <laughs> you think the animals like pain of subjection, man? <laughs> they can't wait till their king comes back. Jen? Okay, so 
I know that, and that's a Bible truth. How is he presenting that? What's his viewpoint? Under the sun. So there are, there are new things in the King James Bible. So I get the reference. Kenny mentioned it too. So, but like something, new things, like a new heaven, new earth. Or like when he saved you, he made you a what? That's what I'm saying. So there is nothing new under the sun because when you look from the sun under, it is pretty much the same sag, bag, and drag, man. I mean, that's just the way it is. I, I get it. Who else we got? Jonathan, you got one, and then we'll go over to Justin. Mm-hmm. And spake also the son of Elisha that no man putteth a piece of new garment upon the whole. Yet you otherwise than both the new mm-hmm. and both the new make it a rent. And the piece that was taken out of the new agreeth not with the old. And no man put a new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish, but new wine must be put into new bottles. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith the old man. That's always one, that's one of the most craziest passages in the Bible, man, to me. <laughs> it's just it's, it's bizarre, man. Justin? Colossians 3, 9 through 11. Why not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds? There you go. And have put on the new man. There it is, which man. Which is renewed in knowledge yep. after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, mm-hmm. barbarian, Scythian, bond, bond. Yep. or free, but Christ is all and in all. Brother Bert on the right, and then Paul on the left. Ezekiel eleven sixteen and nineteen. I'm always pulling out Zeke from the back back row, man. Therefore, say, thus saith the Lord God. Although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary Mm -hmm. where they shall come. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things Mm -hmm. and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit there you go. And I will take the stony heart, heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh. That, oh, that's no, that's fine. That's fine. 20 is good. That they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. Amen. All right. Paulie and then Haley. Romans 6, 1 to 4. I'm, I'm here, kid. I'm, I'm, wait, I'm so anticipating I'm walking towards you right now. <laughs> What shall we say? <coughs> shall we continue in sin that grace may mm-hmm. come? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Have. Christ were baptized into his mm-hmm. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that, like as Christ was raised up mm-hmm. from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Newness of life. Hale, that's a good one. Haley? Mm-hmm. Amen. Jeff, would you like another opportunity to redeem yourself, even though you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Uh, what kind of testament do we typically lean towards? Oh, yeah. A New Testament. See what happens? I know. We all clinch up. I do the same stuff, man. You're like, New Testament. That's like the most basic one, man. I, yeah, I know. Because well, Let me see if I can pull one out that just freak everybody out. So does anybody have one in the New Testament? Anybody have one in the New Testament? Yes, no? Megan. Fire away. Can I start up at 12, though, because it makes more sense? That would be fine, just as long as you don't pick, like, half the verse, then jump to the end of the half the verse and sing the <laughs> other half. Here, go, go ahead. A, a, 10 through 10 and 13. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith a new covenant. Mm-hmm.
That is awesome. Seriously, that's phenomenal, man. That is, that's outstanding. Megan, that's, that, you just moved up another few notches, just to make sure. I'm telling you, you're getting close, man. It's a big, this is a big day. It's a big day. That's a, that's a very good one. I'm disappointed right now. No, go, go. I, I know you do. I know you do, but I like bunnies, but I kill them. Go ahead. Go to, Hebrew, go to Hebrews 10. I'll give you one. Bert, I'll get you in a, in a second here. Go to Hebrews 10, if you could, please. Hebrews 10. Verse number 19 says, having therefore brethren, of course, talking to the Hebrews, we understand a lot of tribulational context in this, but also you got to think about the Hebrews who are used to doing things the Old Testament way. Having therefore brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. A new and living way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know why? Because I'm alive. Those animals are dead. I'm alive. <laughs> My blood, that's a, new, that's a new and living way. Brother Burke, go ahead. I think that'll be the last one, unless somebody else has got another one. I'm looking for my students from Tuesday night on the left right here that sit three rows up. I'm trying to help them out. We'll, we'll end with one that's, I'm sure, is your favorite. <laughs> John, John 13, 30, 30. Oh, no. <laughs> Tim, man, are you idiot? <laughs> <laughs> you love one another. Oh. I hate you. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way to end that, after love. I hate, that's really cool. No, it, it's a new commandment because, I mean, <laughs> that's pretty cool stuff, man. Uh, all right, Taylor, are you the last one? Okay. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. He had put a new song in my mouth, even praise the word God. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. Yeah, amen. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise the Lord God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust How many of you have ever heard new song in my heart? It's not. It's new song in my mouth. You know why? Because it's already in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the that's why the new song goes to my mouth, because of what he did in my heart. This is uh, this is honestly, this is uh Okay, let's do it. Let's, I'm, I'm, I'm diving off the deep end again to the... <laughs> and uh, my new name, a new name, yeah. Go ahead, Jen, Jennifer. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to get louder. Thank you. <laughs> That's excellent. Now, let me, let me ask you a question. Yeah, I'm, there, I'm staring at you two right now. Estiana's still looking, but she knows it's, she's out in the deep sea. Re there's a really good one in Revelation 21 further down. Behold, I make all things. Yeah. That's a real good one. Nobody's quoted 2 Corinthians 5.17 yet either. I mean, Haley did, she mentioned it because that's the only two places you find a new creature, but 2 Corinthians 5.17, but uh, very quickly, and I'm not doing this because we got into the mystery of the rapture, but did you see how he said in verse 12 that Jen read? He said, my God, uh, temple of my God, name of my God, city of my God, come down out of heaven from my God. Now, how could it be that Jesus Christ, who is God, says that... Now, this answers, this answers the John 20 thing where he says, where Thomas says, my Lord, my God, but Jesus before that tells Mary what? I have not ascended to where? My Father, your Father, my God, your God. Now, Jesus Christ is God, but when the Word becomes flesh, what does He automatically do? 
he puts himself in what? Subjection to the Father. And that goes all the way out to eternity once the Word becomes flesh, even though he's 100% God and 100% man. That is a mind blower, man. He will not lose the subjection to the Father once the Word became flesh and came down here and took the wounds. But yet he's the everlasting Father. <laughs> Come on, man. I figured the Bible out. I got a YouTube channel. <laughs> You're an idiot, man. All right, Kenny, please. I got you. He's got it. He's got it. You... 6, 15. Yeah. Now, now, hold on, hold on. No, no, I'm not mad at you. But your girl in the back, Haley, already quoted that one. The cross-reference from 1 Corinthians? No, no, no. She did the Galatians one first. So now you've got to pull the Corinthians one, kid. Don't look at the camera because we're going to play this back at your house, and we're going to watch it <laughs> on 90-inch high-def 8K. Go ahead. Ask on, please. And then, Kenny, you, you do, Kenny, get... Eyes on your own paper. Second Corinthians 10, 2 Corinthians 5.70. Go ahead, Estiana. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's, I've been waiting for that all night. I've been waiting for that so I can stop weeping. <laughs> Kenny, your, your lady friend just took that from me. Yep. Oh, the Colossians, can we do that one? Which one? Go ahead, fire it up. Be, you, you, nah, it's not, but it's not a new reference, I don't believe. All right, let's do this. Kenny, I'll call you later. I'm going to give you all night to come up with it. Yeah, it just says. That was probably a Tuesday night cross reference, man. All right. Go to Titus chapter number two. Get a few verses on our mystery here mystery of the rapture or the calling out of the body of Christ. I personally don't have a problem with somebody calling it the rapture. I've gotten into it with the brethren, of course. Well, rapture's not in your Bible. Yeah, I, 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 I'm aware of that. Thanks, thanks for the big, uh, the big 10-4 there, kid, the big heads up. I didn't know that. Titus chapter number two. But the Lord doesn't call it a rapture. I understand that. But he does call it several other things. So tonight, in the remaining minutes we have, I want to take a look at other names and places in the scripture for the, the, the mystery of the calling out of the body of Christ and obviously the changing of the uh, corruptible into incorruption, uh, corruption into incorruption, and mortality into immortality. Uh, the mystery is not just the calling out of the body of Christ with the last trump. I understand that. I mentioned it last week is that there's also part of that is we're getting changed from this flesh and blood which cannot inherit the kingdom of God into the likeness of Jesus Christ. That's all part of it. Uh, one of the blessings for me personally is not to ever think anything evil again. No evil surmisings, no gossiping, no rumor mongering, no thought of, you know, why isn't this person here? Why didn't this person do that? You ought to be happy for that too. I don't know about you, but my thought life is a problem still. As much as you read the Word of God, you have to yield to it and obey it, or you'll still battle with those thoughts, and they're still going to be there, but it'd be good to have some armament at your disposal to fight those imaginations. The Bible says, though we uh, walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into the captivity of Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. I'm not quoting that to impress you. I'm quoting that because I use that often to fight the thoughts I have. I picture myself captivating a thought and bringing it to Jesus Christ and saying, do you approve of this? And if he doesn't, then Lord, would you get it out of here with a washing of water by the word? Would you wash that all out of my thoughts, please? Uh, the renewing of your mind is a huge thing, man. It's a huge thing. Uh, it, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You will not think like your heavenly father unless you're spending time with the mind of Christ he gave you. That's why part of the asking questions I'm going to keep saying is for you to stay on your toes spiritually, not to impress me or impress anybody else in here, but to show yourself approved unto God by the study and time you put in. I don't get it why you don't know Bible verses. I don't know if you even know we're in a battle or even care that you're in a battle. You battle the way your Savior battled with a sharp two-edged sword in your hand, in your heart, in your mind, in your mouth. That's how the Lord got rid of the temptation and the tempter, did he not? Well, if he memorized Scripture and he is the Scripture, I think it would behoove me to hide some of that in my heart too. 
Oh, I just, I don't really know. Oh, okay, well, you're not good at memorization. You're right. But the Holy Ghost that's inside you is an expert at it. It's an expert at it. Bible says in Titus chapter number two, let's do this. Uh, uh, let's go, Brother Justin. Can you get familiar passages? These are other names and places in the scripture for the mystery of the calling out of the body of Christ or the rapture. 11 through 15, Brother. Actually, Brother Justin, take it right. Yeah, 11 through 15 is good. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Even though the world is presently what, according to Galatians 1, 4? It's presently evil, right? And the whole world, life, and wickedness is 1 John 5. So you can live in this present world soberly, righteously, and godly. You can. You can't, well, I'm just overwhelmed. It's so evil out there. God just told you, you can live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. One of the ways to do it is what's wrapped up in the next verse. Looking for that blessed hope. Yeah, man. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority, but no man despise thee. That's a good way to preach your Bible. Look for Jesus Christ, and while you're looking, get busy working for him. That'll keep you living soberly, righteously, and godly. It's one way to do it. Uh, one way to keep yourself clean from this present evil world is, he's coming back at any time. I should be prepared for that. If not, I die, I'm still going to be home with him, and there'll be no more prayers, no more track handing out, no more prayer requests, no more Bible reading, and my book and my tale will be done in my life. And it's over. There'll be no more to add to it, no more to take away from it. You, you have a tale to live, and when that tale is over, either by death or rapture, that's it, man. That's why you got to make hay while the sun shines. You, you, you can't take the chance that, you know what, I've got another 40, 50 years. You might have another 40 or 50 minutes. You say, that's threatening. No, that's soberly. That's soberly that, oh, well, I'm 25 and I'm in great shape. Yeah. Great shape compared to who? I think Reggie White was in pretty good shape. You know who Reggie White was? Yeah. If you don't, don't go Google it. You'll probably pick up something stupid. Reggie White was a phenomenal Hall of Fame football player. And I, I don't know why the Lord took him home, but that, that boy's in real good shape, man. Bench for five, 600 pounds, man. Fast as fast can be, retired. Uh, had a good testimony and witness for Jesus Christ the bulk of his life. Went to sleep one night, didn't wake up. Well, why not? He's a professional athlete, man. Because death doesn't care what your rank or stature is in life. It doesn't care if you're saved or not. The wages of sin is still death, whether you're saved or lost. So I want to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Well, how do I do that? Looking for the blessed hope. What a great name. It is, a, it is the blessed hope. I wonder about saved people who have no smile about the fact that the rapture's happening. And Karen knows what I'm going to say. It's her mom, my mother-in-law. You could talk to her about anything, and she was a saved lady, but you could talk to her about anything. But if you start talking about the rapture, She'd get wigged out, man. <laughs> Her last name's Wig, and that was funny, man. She'd get well, of course she'd get wigged out. Would she get browned out? No, she'd get wigged out, man. But I mean, but you talk to her, she says, I, I like my life down here. Cancer, diabetes, not a whole lot of money. But you're saved and not looking for the blessed hope. I'm not just picking on my mother in law for a second. I think most saved people live like that. That's a blessed hope, man that my Lord could come at any time in the clouds and say, let's go. I'll show you one, and I'm not doing this because, I mean, we, we were there last week, but go to, go to 1 Thessalonians, please. 1 Thessalonians. I, I'm not going to reread. I just want to read one verse, and then we'll, we'll move on to the next name in Scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. Your two rapture passages in your Bible, 1 Corinthians 15, where it's actually called the mystery and the changing, um, and also in 1 Thessalonians 4. The Bible says this in verse number 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have what? I, you should be sorrowful when the brethren die. But I don't sorrow as others. You know why? 
the blessed hope. He's the resurrection. He's the hope in the resurrection, man. I mean, he's the hope of Israel is what it says in Acts 28. He is your hope, man. It's not blind like, oh, you know, I just hope one day. No, I know one day he's coming, and I'm looking for him. I'm looking for him. Particularly when I'm on 84, I'm looking for him. <laughs> so that's the blessed hope. Go to 1 Timothy chapter number 6. 1 Timothy 6, please. Ask to get 1 Timothy 6, if you could. 1 Timothy 6. 12 through 16, please, Estiana. 12 through 16. I love that. That is good preaching. Amen. See the pastor had just preached right there, baby. <laughs> but do you know what the Bible called it in verse 14? Did you see what he snuck in there? So we had the blessed hope in Titus. What did he call it right there in verse? What did he call it? Exactly. You got to mark these down in your Bible, man. There's a, there's a reason why these names come up and they are specific. I think there's one outside the Pauline epistles. It's pretty wild how this works. It's a blessed hope, and now it's also the appearing. The appearing to you and I is him coming in the clouds. It's, it's a mystery. Uh, I do believe this when he comes for us in the clouds, you will see him and say people will see him, we'll hear him, and the other people will go, like in John 12, did an angel speak? Or is that thunder? We'll hear his voice clearly like Mary in the, in the garden. When, he said, when she, uh, he said Mary, she knew who it was. She recognized the voice. She knew exactly who it was. She didn't recognize she thought he was the gardener, but when she heard that voice, she goes, there's only one person that talks like that. Jesus Christ. I believe the lost people will hear, uh, they'll hear the thunder or some sort of voice and they'll We'll hear come up hither, I believe you'll hear your name, John 10, and you'll be out of here. And the world will go, what was that? They're always weird anyway. Talking about the rapture and getting called out of here. The aliens take them, I don't know what the delusion will be, but it's something of that nature where, you know what, it's going to be so bizarre. We're, point being is that the appearing to us is singular to the body of Christ. The dead in Christ first, and we which are alive remain. At the second coming, every eye shall see him. That's a big difference, man. He's not coming back for the whole world. He's coming back in the atmosphere to take his children out who have been baptized into his body by the Holy Ghost. That's a unique section of people in Bible history, man. That's pretty cool. I like it. It's called the appearing. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Brother Kenny, 2 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 8, please, if you could. Now, why did I not write that verse down? What an idiot, man. Sorry, having a moment up here right now. Having a moment with myself. I should have wrote. Sorry, Kenny, go ahead. Four, one through eight. Uh, four, one through eight. I got to make a little blurbulation over here. I made it. Wow. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, and his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in Amen. season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heed unto themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Mm -hmm. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, Amen. the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Mm -hmm. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I love I have this. Amen. My course. I have kept the faith. 
Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do you see the appearing in verse number 8? Thank you, Kenny. You see the appearing there, and do you see the appearing in verse number 1? It's the appearing to you and I. Now, look at the, that ver, verse number 1 to show you how awesome your King James Bible is. Appearing, and then what's after that? Kingdom. kingdom. What's in between? And. You see how one word can mess you up? His appearing and his kingdom are not the same thing. One's the second coming, and one is the rapture. That's how significant every word is in that King James Bible. You don't take any of it for granted. I mean, the word it could be the nation of Israel. It could be Jesus Christ in the womb. It could be the church, Ephesians 5. Uh, really, a word like it? Yeah. God puts a lot of weight. and He puts a lot of time and purification on that book. As silver tried in the furnace of earth. Uh, the words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. That's Psalm 12, 6, and 7. Every word of God is pure. He's a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6 is, Add thou not unto his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. That's 5 and 6 of Proverbs. Why do you memorize all that? Just keep your heart, heart and your mind focused on Jesus Christ. Stop thinking about, you know, uh, I don't know, gremlins out there or the three feet of snow that everybody thought we were getting. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was like, they're shutting down schools. I I was uh, discipling Brother James uh, over the phone, and he's like, they shut down schools yesterday for today in Massachusetts. I'm dead serious. He's like, this is stupid. I said, yeah, man, everybody's a fembot. I mean, seriously, if you don't know what a fembot is, go back and watch Bionic Woman from the 70s. Brother Bert, you know, the fembot used to take on Lindsay Wagner and just trash her because she was super strong. That's a real thing, man. I'm telling you, man. And Andre the Giant played Bigfoot. With a $6 million, that's real stuff, man. It's better than Pokemon. At least you knew it wasn't real. You're like, that's Andre the Giant. Who doesn't know that? Oh, yeah. You knew it was Andre the Giant. But now it's like, oh, I'm, po- I'm, I'm Pikachu. <laughs> Megan, I'm hitting a lot of chords tonight with you. I can tell, I can, I can tell I'm, I, I, I got to tell you this, man. So we're out, and I'm out with Mains, and you know there's going to be a fight somewhere at some point. Yeah, we're going to get in a fight. Something's going to happen. He's going to say something. I'm going to have to tackle him, and then it's just going to be bad. Or vice versa. So we're out in the street. We're at the uh, Excel Center, and it might, have been, it might have been the Monster Jam, which is really cool, the Monster Trucks, you know, but it's a, good, it's a great crowd to talk to about the Lord, you know? And uh, the little kids are like this big, go by with the earphones on, you know, because they're like, I got to protect my ears, you know? <laughs> anyway, uh, you can still hear me too through those headphones, believe me. I make sure when they go by to get a little louder. But anyway, so there's a group of like six or seven adult men, I think they were, walking around like this outside the Excel Center. I, now, I didn't know what this was. Adult men playing, and I found out Pokemon Go. Now, Maine somehow knew about this, and it was just like like a great white shark on a meat suit. He was on, he's like, what are you guys doing anyway? Are you playing games? Oh, what about Jesus Christ? And he just, I'm like, we're, we're going we're gonna to die. We're going to die, man. I'm just standing back here because it, it was on the parking garage side. And I'm like, I remember it vividly. And the guy's like, uh, this game is Pokemon. I'm like, you're a full grown man. <laughs> now, if it was Batman, that's different. <laughs> There are accepted games in the, in the King James Bible. I'm just telling you. I'm just, <laughs> Paulie, you know what I'm talking about. Get to the altar right now, man. I'm just saying. But you get, you're getting all I'm like, you get... It, it's, it's bizarre. I was talking about every word of God is pure and all this stuff, so I forgot the rest of it. So let's move on. It's Colossians chapter 3. <laughs> Where was I, by the way, when I was saying <laughs> Does anybody remember? Thank you. I came from 2 Timothy 4. I was like, I was trying to... Uh, every, and the end, I do remember that part. But how did I get to the Pokemon? Oh, that's weird, man. That's weird. I'm sorry. That was a myth. That's, a, that's right. That's the eighth mystery. How does, he, how, does he, how does he get the stuff he gets? He has no idea, man. Uh, oh, the point being is that you'd rather track that down and you'd rather follow that than the pure, simplistic words of God. 
You'd rather do that than spend time with that book and find out what God says. You'd rather be entertained by all this other foolishness. And that's what say people do, man. I, I, I don't care if you have a TV or don't have a TV. I don't care, man. I'm just saying you have to watch and guard your affections for that stuff. When you have a book that's so pure, he would make an it, an and, a comma, so significant it could split a thousand years. That's how cool your Bible is, man. <laughs> that's how cool your Savior is, that he would do that for you and I. All right, where are we at? Mm-hmm. So it'd be shorter than it. I'm not trying to one off you. I'm not I'm I I I am not you not green not giving yourself so away. I'm gonna tap this wood until I put my fingers through it. You know what I thought of that. Ken Green. I know, well, that's it. No, this is the Jonathan Benoit uh, production, man. This thing's solid as, oh, man. No, they, <laughs> Colossians, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Colossians chapter 3. <laughs> Seriously. Kenny Green going to be black and blue after this one. All right, Mackenzie, get Colossians 3, 1 through 4, please, if you could. Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 4. Amen. Set your affection not things above, not on things above. For you are dead, and your life is hid in Christ. Wow. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear in Up here. Up here. There he is. I mean, if, now I'm not saying this with any questioning at all, but if it's a twinkling of an eye, you don't have a lot of time to get your affairs in order. Now, could it, I've heard some people preach, you know, maybe you get 30-day window like the, the Jewish bride prepared for her husband and all that stuff, but we're not a Jewish bride. Um, I mean, there's some similitude and some figure there, but I don't know, man. Uh, that's the blessing of the mystery of the rapture. I sincerely don't know when he's going to come back. I have an idea that it'll be probably, I believe it's akin to Pentecost. I believe it's 50 days after Passover. What's interesting is the feast of weeks or Pentecost is always different because the spring and the way the days always change so you can never nail down. It's pretty interesting how that works, man. I don't know. When, uh, when is Passover? Second week of April this year? I don't know. But 50 days after is Pentecost. That's when the Holy Ghost was given in the bapti a baptismal form. Body of Christ goes up. I, I don't, I'm not saying that's the way it is. Bottom line is be prepared for your death. If you're ready to die because you've done everything for Jesus Christ you can, then praise the Lord, let's go. If not, tighten some things up, man. That, that's all. That's not, not, I don't know. I mean, guys predict the, I mean, the guy that predicted the rapture, and uh, it was uh, 80, right, 80, 88 reasons why the rapture happened in 88, and then he came out with a book in 89, it says 89 reasons. <laughs> and you know what? Stupid save people went out and bought both copies. Now, I get it if our calendar was right 6,000 years, take away 7, 1993, but you really don't know if it was 4 BC or 4 AD. I mean, even Usher's chronology and all that stuff, you don't know because God doesn't count time like you and I do, and he stops the stopwatch many times in the King James Bible. Rains, he doesn't count. Job said, man, I, I wish the day of my birth was never even included or counted. You don't know how God's timetable is. That's why we don't go by signs. We go on looking 1 Timothy 4, 2 Timothy 3. We're watching the way saved and, and lost people are acting. I'm not looking for earthquakes and famines and pestilences and COVID. <laughs> stupid, man. That's stupid. Don't you have anything else to preach, brother, than COVID being the mark of the beast? I don't care if you get the shot or don't get the shot, man. But if you get the shot, that's the mark of the beast, then you're out of the body of Christ. <laughs> People are whack, man. <laughs> it's just stupid. Anyway, don't let the Bible clear up a good college education, as a good old-fashioned preacher used to say. Go to 1 Peter chapter number 1, please. 1 Peter chapter number 1. Paul, 1 Peter chapter number 1. I know you and Peter don't get along too well, according to Galatians, but that's okay. <laughs> So 1 Peter chapter number 1, 1 through 9, if you could. It's a kind of a big stretch, so 
Good breath, kid, okay? Get your cardio in. You did, we did calf raises, now we gotta do cardio, man. We do cardio. Yeah, we gotta burn the car, get the cardio going. Get the lactic acid out. Mm-hmm. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope mm -hmm. by the resurrection of there you go. Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that it is not a way reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith and to salvation, ready to be revealed Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. And the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Oh. Whom have not seen, ye love. There you go. Though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy and speak one full of joy. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Well, that's pretty cool right there. The trial of your faith is much more precious than gold than it's tried. I mean, until the, until the appearing of Jesus Christ, you're going to go through it. The salvation, you're, to get out of here, the appearing of the, the Savior, you're going to go through some stuff down here to make you more like Jesus Christ. Now, that being said, he said right there, whom having not seen ye love, in whom, though now you see him not, yet believing you rejoice with joy, speaking full, full of glory. What did the Lord say to Thomas in the upper room? Yep. Yeah. You believe because you've seen. Blessed are they that believe and they haven't seen. I've never seen Jesus Christ. But he's more real to me than anybody I've ever met in my life. And when I see him, that's going to be cool, man. He's got toenails, I said the other a few weeks ago. He's got like fingernails. He has like eyes, you know. Sometimes we think of him as some disembodied spirit kind of ooh, floating around. No, he's like got hands and feet. Man, you're going to see him and you're going to lose it. Thank God you got a glorified body. <laughs> you're, you wouldn't be able to handle it. First John, Megan, first John, please. Chapter 3. You can't, you pulled Hebrews 8 out and now you need a second for 1 John? Man. Just it very fast. That's okay. That's okay. 1 John, chapter 3. I mean, you, that, that was a, the Hebrews 8 one was right up there with James pulling out in Ephesians 5 that night. I was like, I just stare at him like, if you got it on camera, it's like I was a stony like Nebuchadnezzar. I was like, you got Ephesians 5, man. How do you get that? Anyway, 1 John 3. One, two, and three, if you could, please. That's okay. You said first John chapter three. Mm-hmm. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, there you go. we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath his hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. How can you not link that to where we were in Titus? The blessed hope, living soberly, righteously, and God in this present world. If you have that hope in you, I know it's First John 3. I understand exactly where we're at, but you have that hope in you. You do live a, a pure life for him, or you, at least you attempt it. You don't just sit back and say, well, I just can't overcome that. And I, you know, I don't get that, man. Give it a shot, man. Well, my kids are just out of control. Have you tried to raise them the Bible way? Have you, have you tried? People say, well, I, I've tried prayer and it doesn't work. Well, blessing your food doesn't count. Seriously, man. Well, I've tried. I, what, is he, what is Jesus, a smoothie? 
Is he, a, is he you know, on the Wendy's menu? I tried it and didn't like it. Well, I tried prayer. It didn't work. It's like you meet people in the street and you're talking about the Lord. I tried that, but it didn't really take. What, it, what do you mean it didn't take? Well, you know, I tried Jesus. It just didn't work for me. I don't get that, man. Yeah. It's a weird thing. All right, last one because we, we got a jet. Second Thessalonians. This one's called another, a, a different name. Uh, this one presents another name, excuse me, for the calling out of the body of Christ. It's a pretty cool one. Without getting into all the other verses that are just real fun, man, in this whole passage here. People will, people, and I say that charitably, people will try to take you here and prove, use this text all the way down to probably seven or eight and prove you're going through the tribulation period because they don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth with day of Christ and the Lord and all this other stuff. But Brother Bird, if you could, for where we're at before we get into this whole thing, could you read one and two just for now? Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, Amen. nor be troubled, Amen. neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now I'm not getting ahead of myself, but what's the, what's the day called there specifically? The day of who? Christ. Day of Christ. But he also calls it something else earlier. Coming, coming. Go ahead. I'm sorry? Coming, coming of what? Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, most of the time, coming of the Lord in your Bible refers to what? Do you see how, see how crazy that Bible's written, man? But what also helps you out in there? Brethren and our what? Yeah. Our gathering, man. One day we're going to gather on the other side of the frozen glass as one big family. No, one big family. And, and it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be great, man. Our gathering together. That's why this is kind of a dry run down here to see how we get along down here. <laughs> it is. It's a dry run, man. I know you're going to get a glorified body and it'll be, you know, happy, dappy, and slappy when you're up there. And, you know, just, uh, every, everything's just going to be just wunderbar when we're up there. But this is a... This is, that was funny. I don't care who you are. But you're, you, our, our gathering, I mean, we, we practice it down here when we assemble together. That doesn't mean you're not going to have troubles in a church. Of course you're going to have trouble, man. But you try to move past those for the sake of, you know what, Jesus Christ. And our gathering, that's one of, that's one of my favorite names for the rapture. We gather together to sing the Lord's praises. We got, there's all kinds of stuff. Gather on the other side, storm, uh, Jordan, Stormy Banks, I stand. Yeah, man, we're going to be gathered together one day. You're going to hear, come up hither, and it's over. You won't care one second about bills, sickness, child raising. Or it, it's over. Gone. Yeah, man. That, that's fantastic. It, that's why it's a mystery. And it's a great mystery. Brother Bert, pray for us. And we will vamoose for the Wednesday evening. Father, thank you. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for the uh, study tonight. Lord, thank you that uh, you are coming forth. You are going to gather us together. Yeah, amen. And amen. Amen. Like unto you and uh, change our vile body. Yeah. Lord, it must be like unto your glorious body. Thank you for it. Uh, as Brother Dave mentioned, Lord, we won't think evil. We won't do evil. Yeah, we amen. Sin. It won't be a plague to us anymore. Lord, we'll be able to. Uh, worship you and fellowship with you and praise you the way we ought to. Amen. I pray that we would do so in the meantime, Lord, as much as we just give it every effort and yield ourselves to you. And, and uh, in the meantime, Lord, we praise you. And Amen. We ought to get a head start, but uh, thank you one day that we'll do that flawlessly as you deserve. And uh, thanks for the promise of your coming. Yeah, amen. And we look forward to it. Helps to be faithful. To witness to other people and be an encouragement and pray for each other. Uh, in the meantime, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 6.30 Friday night at Wood Lake Nursing Home for those who can make it. If you'd like to give it a shot. If we have enough people, we'll start divvying it up. Maybe we'll have one group do one Friday night and the other group do the second. We'll see how it goes. But So Wood Lake up in, uh, what's the actual formal name, Paul? Wood Lake Home at, or Wood? At it's Wood Lake at Tall and it's a nursing home. So 6.30.
go get there a little early, we'll walk in. You got to sign in and all that stuff. So if you can make it, if not, that's not a big deal. We'll fire it up, man.